I'm delighted to say that we're now joined by the Sligo Rovers manager, John Russell, who's on the road at the moment, but joins us after what was a magnificent night for Sligo last night. John, how are you getting on this morning? Yeah, I'm great. Yeah, good morning, guys. Um, yeah, really uh, proud of all of the players and, and the staff and the performance last night. You know, the big moment for the club. And, um, you know, we created history. Uh, there was a challenge put out to the, the players before the game last night. Could we be the first team in the history of Sligo Rovers to qualify for the European competition? And uh, they produced the good. Yeah, we were chatting to Alan Keane a little bit earlier on. He was saying that probably what impressed him the most was that you go back to, say, the Bala game where you were on the ropes and it could well have seen you exit Europe on that night. Now you've come out in this Motherwell tie and played extremely well in both legs, taking even the away leg into account, which is a very professional performance, helped by Aidan's great goal last week too. But to play really well over these 180 minutes must be very pleasing for you. Yeah, um, I mean, for us as a club and, and for the League of Ireland, you know, to go away and uh, be the SPL team and then to bring them back home and, and finish the job was huge, you know. And I think you yeah, were disappointed in the return leg against Bala, you know, our performance at home in front of a big crowd. We we rode our luck a bit on the night, but it was important as a group just to get through that first round. And, and I felt the players carried out the game plan perfectly in the second round. You know, we were fully deserving of the, of the win and, you know, for us now going forward, it's about raising the bar and, and having that belief as a, as a club in Ireland that we can compete at this stage and, and get through rounds in Europe because we know the rewards financially for the club and it helps us push it on and not the pitch. Yeah, it's massive. If you've got a budget of around 1.8 a year and already there's 850,000 in the can, that's not including the money that's going to come in from the two games against Viking with the prize money, with, you know, the obviously we'll talk maybe in a little bit about where the game is going to be, but you take the ticket sales into account as well. This is a huge financial injection for the club. That's massive, yeah. We don't have a big benefactor or people pumping money into the club. In Sligo, we have our model. It's... Um, community run you know the committee do an unbelievable job and the fundraising that goes on every year to keep the, the club full time um, you know we're developing the academy but it costs money and fortunately at the moment we don't have a big TV deal in the League of Ireland and the prize money wouldn't be that big so when you do get a chance in, in Europe to get through rounds you've got to grab with both hands and the, the finances will be a big help you know there are plans to redevelop the stadium and, and build training facilities so hopefully this will accelerate all that process yeah, well, especially when you consider that there's multiples to be earned compared to winning the League of Ireland. Like, even getting a result in one of these games in Europe can be worth as much as the prize money for winning the League of Ireland. So that just maybe goes to show the importance of getting a run if you do win a few games in these competitions. Absolutely, yeah. And the thing for us now is we've got to make sure we get into those European spots in the league. Um, we want to be competing in there next year, whether it's through the Cup or getting into the top three, because... We know that it's key to get this money in and, you know, to grow the club, you need to be able to compete in Europe, to attract players and um, it's going to be massive that, you know, we capitalise on this. You know, sometimes you have to have a lucky draw as well. You know, sometimes you get big teams in the first round and you don't have really a good chance of getting through. But thankfully, the two teams we played so far, we've had a game plan and we've executed it. And last night, John, three minutes in, Shane Blaney lifts the place completely. What was it like on the sideline and the reaction? Uh, it was a special moment. You know, I said it before, European nights are special occasions for all the players, for the fans, you know, and the atmosphere in the ground, you know, around the town, even building up into the game was amazing. And to get a, a start like that, you know, you saw that goal in any league around the world. it would be getting replayed every, uh, every couple of hours. And for Shane, I, I see him in training every morning. He practiced penalties and free kicks and for him to set up or step up in that setting and that moment and the score of the goal was incredible. It also must settle you then on the sideline because if you get the lead, you know, things can settle down a small bit then. Absolutely, yeah. There's always going to be that um, nervousness coming into the second round or second leg. You know, Motherwell, they had a good look at us in the first round and they were hurting and, you know, when we played them over there, and I think we fully deserved to get the 1-0 win but their crowd were booing and you could see and sense that the frustration from them. So we knew there was going to be a reaction coming over last night and, you know, we knew we had to start on the front foot and, you know, try and get an early goal and not just sit back for the whole whole game and try and protect the lead and, and take 
take a one in the lead early in the game, it really calmed the nerves and uh, helped us grow into the game. Yeah, something Graham Alexander was talking about after they were booed off the pitch. He was saying, look, it's understandable that the fans will have an expectation, but he was very quick to put praise back onto your team by saying, look, Sligo have come over here, they've defended very well as a unit, they've scored their goal, they've come away with a very much deserved 1-0 win. And basically he was saying his side deserved the flack they were getting from their fans because of the fact that they were so well constrained by you guys. He was very quick to give credit back. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's nice to get those compliments because, you know, we have top players here. And I've said it before, you know, our league is probably underrated. And for us to get that result, it probably raised the profile again. And, you know, we've got young players at Sligo Rovers that have huge potential, huge talent. And to play on the European stage, it allows them to showcase their abilities. And, you know, we're doing an incredible amount of work. You know, it's a full-time professional club. And, players want to improve every day and the staff are working really hard with them and you know moments like that last night you're, you're coming up against players that are perceived as, as a higher level and a, and a higher league and we're well capable of competing against these teams and you know it was a big night for the club and, and a big statement. Is there a little bit of a balancing act over the next few weeks now because you want to progress in the FAI Cup this coming weekend and then you want to keep your league form around the two legs against Viking as well. It's a very important period coming up for you now because you mentioned you don't want this to be a one-off run in Europe, potentially miss out in the European places for next season. You've got to try and balance it off across a few competitions now in the coming weeks. Yeah, it's going to be a big challenge. The, the club probably hasn't experienced that before and... You know, you've seen it last year with Bohemians. They had a fabulous run in Europe and, and then they ended up getting to the cup final and just missing out winning it and they missed out in Europe. So you can see how quickly it can change. So for us, we've got to try and balance the squad as best we can and, you know, rotate where we can without compromising any games or, and, and still get results. But look, the, the players are hungry. They're, you know, well capable of going on a run now and the challenge is to get back into those European places in the league. We were talking a bit earlier about you know when you came in and when Bucko left and we were wondering where Sligo's form was going to go after that. How much are you enjoying this adventure as manager of the club now? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. You know, it's a work in progress, and I've been in the job probably two months now, and you know, an incredible amount of work has gone in, and you're, you're trying to change the culture within the club, and um, you know, change the mentality of the players, and, and give them belief that we can raise our, our levels and, 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 and go and compete at a higher level. You know, we want to be competing or be getting through rounds and, and believing that as an Irish club we can go and, and get these results. But you've got to do your work. Day to day. It's, it's when you come into the training grounds, you know, it's, it's going through your principles of play, it's the gym sessions, the video analysis stuff, the, our team meetings, all that stuff feeds into the performances on the pitch and trying to create that style of play and an identity and, you know, for the fans last night to, to walk out the showgrounds after witnessing that performance. That's what we want to be giving back. And John, you were involved back in 2014 against Rosenberg. There was heartbreak that night. It probably felt like one that got away. Does nights like last night make up for it a small bit? Uh, it really does, yeah. I was asked that question actually after the game last night and Dave Cawley, club captain who played um, last night and was outstanding. He says and Dave were in the middle of the park against Rosenberg in both those games and uh, one where you still have, well, I did have sleepless nights, uh, you know, was a huge missed opportunity for the club to go 1 0 up at home in the return leg, you know, 3 1 in Agris and still get knocked out. It was devastating. So, you know, last night was probably one that uh, yeah, helped soften the blow of that Rosenberg game. You probably learn a lot from those occasions. Even when you, you lose like that, you probably know going into last night's game, you probably think of those moments and think, right, what did I learn from that? Yeah, there's, there's always learning um, from past experiences and especially from um, from failures and, and, and losses. So for me, yeah, the, the, going into the, the second leg, you know, I felt we needed to, to be on the front foot, but obviously execute the game plan and, and, and be ready for any adjustments that, that they might make. And, you know, I thought they might change shape within the game and thankfully they didn't, but we would have prepared for all that and, you know, I felt the, the substitutions that we made in the game were the, were the right ones at the right time and, you know, there was fresh legs and we were always a threat to the counter in the second half and it wasn't that we sat back and it was a, you know, we were defending the, the whole game. I think, thought we were fully deserving of the, the 2 nil victory in the end. Yeah, I, look, that was seen with the second goal. I mean, Matt finished it really well. Good work by Keener for the second goal too. Like That's exactly what you want. A clinical moment just to any nerves that might have been there about Motherwell getting back into the game late on 
everything was lifted when that goal went in. You could almost, kind of watching the game even on TV, you could feel within the ground just that relief that was saying, right, we're into round three once the ball hit the net. Yeah, there, there was relief. Um, I suppose it's just that thing with, with Irish clubs, there's always sob stories and uh, what if and uh, you know, the heroic effort. But, and, and it was important last night that there was none of that, you know, that we came in. There, there was pressure on us. There was probably a bit more pressure on Motherwell and, you know, we were still seen as the underdogs. But, you know, for Irish clubs, to compete and, and be beating a FDL team home and away is huge and you know to get the second goal it does calm the nerves and it, and it shows again the potential of the players you know the product is there on the pitch John just one other question before we bring in um, yeah. Gary Buckley here just wondering what your thoughts are I mean the club is obviously just going to have to have a think now about the home leg in a couple of weeks and where it's potentially going to play um, what is your feeling on it it looks like it's probably going to be moved over to Dublin though yeah my feeling on it will be try and get it to the showgrounds, um, you know, whatever criteria we need to try and meet or, or get, get the ground up to speed in the next, we've got, you know, just under two weeks. Um, hopefully, between the, the club and the FEI that we can try and work with UEFA and, and host us and, and play it at the showgrounds because, you know, that's, that's a home home ground. You want our home supporters uh, to be able to walk up to the, the showgrounds and, and witness us playing uh, good football against the top opposition. Well, John, congrats on the great results and the best of luck over the next couple of weeks with Viking. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thank We've you. got Gary Buckley uh, ready to join us, I think, as well, uh, to look back on what was a momentous night. Gary, what a night for the club. Yeah, great night. Jeez, uh, everything went so well for us. I thought we performed in the night and well-deserved, to be honest, over the two legs. Yeah, I mean, the performance has to be quite pleasing because, understandably, nerves could kick in. Like Motherwell were talking about a response. That was one of the things Graham Alexander was saying after the first leg last week, that they were going to go to Ireland and they were going to try and get an early goal and turn this tie around. But instead, it goes completely the opposite way. And, like, we're absolutely, you know, talking up this free kick from last night, but what an amazing goal. Ah, yeah, unbelievable goal. I suppose it's a perfect start for us. Ada does brilliant to, to make the free kick and um, yeah, it was some start for us to be fair, some strike from, from us in the half. <laughs> I know I couldn't do that anyway, to be honest, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great strike and uh, to be fair, he has that in the locker to be a great left foot and uh, perfect start for us and from there it was kind of comfortable, you know, we, we knew we had two all lead and to be honest, we were comfortable all all, all t- t- two legs, like, um, didn't really concede much as in chances and stuff so as soon as that went then we kind of in the back for heads we knew if we kept the same same performance going that we, we were true like yeah, it was a bit less dramatic than Pats who had to rely on their goalkeeper to make a few good saves in Slovenia last night and having to take the penalties but I'm sure um, having had the drama against Bala a couple of rounds ago you're probably thinking well, I don't mind a, a more composed and quiet night at the showgrounds where you score a goal early and score a goal late and progress pretty comfortably no, no, that's not ideal anyway with the with the chances we coughed up against Ball and stuff and they'd, they'd done unbelievable for us to get through before before he left and then um, I suppose over the two legs, I suppose in the first leg, Luke done brilliant for us as well. Half chances here and there, pot shots outside the box. But I suppose John set us up brilliantly there for, for this leg and done his great homework on Motherwell and we're all, like I said, we were comfortable enough, uh, solid enough in the back four, back five and like I said, well deserved over the two legs to go through. Can you tell us a bit about what John has changed over the last couple of months? Because he said to us just a few minutes ago that he was coming in to maybe try and just get the spirits up again, maybe change the culture a little bit, and maybe a little bit of change in the style of the football. What's John brought since he's come in? Um, I suppose probably the biggest thing for me that I know is probably just intensity. Um, obviously Liam had his ways and stuff, and he wanted to kind of control football, which is which is his way of doing things, which is fine. But I suppose John has his own ways and he wants to kind of be kind of, kind of aggressive on and off the ball and even on the ball, moving it quickly and stuff like that. And I suppose it took us a few weeks to um, to get used to it and stuff like that, but we're reaping the awards now and then in Europe, that kind of style is suiting us as well. And hopefully going forward, now into the league games as well, we kind of kick up the table as well, not just in Europe, but big thing for me is John is the intensity and and and, um, and even the training and stuff like that we're in more often than not um, than, than, than with Liam but I'm enjoying it really enjoying it it's um, it's great when you're when you're winning games that's the that's the great thing but um, yeah it's 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 great when you're when you're going through rounds in Europe and everybody is happy and stuff like that but so far so good it's 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 same goal really like you know 
Yeah, because we were chatting about the need for consistency and probably, look, the squad is going to be tested a little bit over the next while. Um, want to progress in the FAI Cup, want to try and go through in the two legs against Viking, which are coming up. As you say, want to shoot up the league table. Sometimes when a team has a run in Europe, it affects their form domestically. You want to make sure that doesn't happen, particularly over the next few weeks. And bringing that kind of consistency is going to be really important because you know, before you went to Scotland, I remember that UCD game where you were dropping points. And it's going to be a case now of hopefully, from your point of view, not allowing your domestic form to dip here. No, no, absolutely not. That's that's not ideal. You can't get carried away in Europe and stuff like that because the league is a bread and butter. That will ultimately get us Europe again next year if we if if we don't make Europe again next year. But no, this is a waste of nothing, waste for nothing. Like so, yeah, it's it's, it's back to bread and butter now on Sunday and the FA Cup and like there's another there's another big occasion there to get to get to the Viva as well, which is a huge game for the club again. Um, so it's it's kind of heads down, you know, back in the train again tomorrow. Not ideal, obviously, with the with the games coming ticking fast, but that, that's that's the joy of it, and that's being a footballer. But focus now is on Sunday, and then we've already booked Norway next week. You know, it was a massive night for the fans as well. Um, it looked electric watching on. What was it like on the pitch? Yeah, it was great. Jesus, I've I've played many cup finals and league deciders, and, and that that was well up there as a for atmosphere. Jesus. I suppose the goal at uh, at the start was a great help for us as well. They kind of got behind us and we kicked on from there. Um, but yeah, the so, so, showgrounds was rocking. It was um, it was really impressive, to be fair. And if we have that through, through every game this year, close to that, then we find it hard to lose games in, in the showgrounds this year. It's just it's just getting that every week, which is great. Um, but yeah, geez, the fans have been brilliant. Yeah, builds that bond with the supporters too. Like, you know, chatting to some Sligo Rovers fans who've gone to the two away legs and have had, you know, let's be fair, a good time uh, going to England primarily. I think for most of them going to Bala first and uh, many of them went into Liverpool and then some of them went along to Scotland to watch the games against Motherwell. Now they've got a trip to Norway. As players, is your feeling that you can now give Viking a right good fight over these two legs coming up? I don't see why not. Um, I suppose the way John and Ryan Casey do their homework and um, there's no stone on turn, I suppose. Um, we know now that we, as long as we turn up, put a shift, keep a clean sheet, that we'll have a chance. We've got Aidan Keane and Max Matt up front that we get chances, we're going to score them. So, it was a big thing for us that we kept a clean sheet in the last two games and that's given us opportunities to go and win. But, um, yeah, we, we'll be fearful of no one, really, in this stage of the groups or this stage of the qualifiers. But, like I said, it's just... Gary, uh, before you go, is that we're going to be talking Pats a little bit later on. It was just nice to the support of the League of Ireland to watch within about kind of 15 minutes of each other just a kind of a, a yes tweet coming from both clubs about the fact that they qualified with Pats coming through. Like as a League of Ireland man, and even having watched you know, Shamrock Rovers play quite well against Ludogratz, you guys are rivals throughout the season, but to have had three really good Irish performances in Europe this week is fantastic for the league. Oh yeah, it's brilliant. In the Shamrock Rovers game, I was, I was willing them to go on, you know, even when they got to 2-0, I was, I was buzzing for them because... It's great for us as players to see that um, playing the league and, and um, seeing Shamrock Gorbis go to up against Ludogrets was great and obviously saw the result after it buzzing for Pats as well. That's what it is like because to be honest we're, 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 we are the league so it's um, it's great for us and I, hope, I know that they, they'll see us do well as well but um, like, to be honest we're, we're a big family with the league and we should be all looking out for each other you know. Well, look, Gary, best luck getting ready for FEI Cup this Sunday and then getting ready for the trip across to Norway for next Thursday as well. It's a very exciting period for the Bitter Red. Thanks a million for joining us on OTBM. No worries. Thanks very much. Cheers.